Hi, it's Lori from Coast to Coast Craft Girls coming to you from the West Coast. Today I wanted to share a really fun uh, kinetic card that I made using the um, Oceans Collection, the Enchanted Ocean Collection. And I'm going to make the same card, but I'm going to use a little bit different decorations using some other collections. But I wanted to show you this one first. So it lays flat like that. And when you pull, it opens up to create this wonderful scene. So let me flip it up like that. And then it just folds right back down. It's actually oh, really easy to make. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with um, the actual, well, we're going to start with the back panel decoration because um, you have to put that back panel in before you build the card. You're going to build the card around it. So we're going to start with that one. And I'm going to make this kind of a, a beachy scene. So I'm going to start with some sand in the foreground. So I have my Harmony Water Reactive inks. And I'm just going to blend in at the bottom. Oh, I should tell you, this is uh, five inches by six inches. And I'm just going to blend in some sandstorm at the bottom to make my little beach. I'm just going to come up a little bit like that. Not too high. That's probably enough. And then I'm going to put in my sunshine because I want to blend my sky around my yellow. I'm going to put in a sunshine. And this is um, lemon tonic. I'm just going to put my sun sort of about right here. I'm just going to kind of give it a little bit of rays coming down. But there's my sun. Okay. Then I've got baby blue. blend in and the baby blue is just really light so I'm going to put some of that baby blue around my sun and you don't want to blend on top of the yellow because the water reactive inks will in fact blend and you'll get green which you don't really want in your sky so I just put a little bit of baby blue right around the sun and then I'm going to switch to ocean blue again this is still these are still harmony water reactive inks and this one is a, is a lot darker so you want to be careful you don't very start very lightly because you don't want a bunch of circle blobs so let's do our sky there's our sky and then I'm going to put some a band of actual water in the middle. And I want my darker blue, my midnight for that, but I want a nice even um, horizon line. So what I'm going to do I'm going to use a nice scrap piece of card and I'm going to put that straight and 
I'm just going to hold it down with my hand. Or just a little bit higher. Right about there. And I don't need the line at the bottom because if it's uneven coming up onto the sand, that's fine. I don't mind that. But I want a very straight horizon line. So that's why I'm going to use my piece of scrap card. It doesn't have to be perfect, you're just trying to give the look of the ocean. Now I've got a nice, even, straight horizon line, hopefully. Yeah, looks like it. And there's my back piece. So now I'm ready to build to build the card. So we start with uh, two pieces of five by seven card, which is the front and the back um, piece. So so here you've got a front, the front piece and then the back piece. And um, one thing, a couple of things that I learned making this card. When I made it the first time, I did not have this dark blue on there. And the white, the, just the white card was not sturdy enough. You need so that when you pulled, it, this piece would flex and it, it didn't work very well. So you need some good heavyweight cardstock or layers. And I actually liked kind of mounting it front and back on the dark blue. So that's what I'm going to do with this one too. So I've got my two five by sevens um, for the front and the back. And then, and then I've got two pieces of dark blue, which are going to go really on the back, sort of, you know, on the, on the very bottom and then to mount kind of between this top piece and some um, mat board, some matting that I'm going to put over the top. And that'll give it nice rigidity. So my five by seven, I'm going to cut a front aperture in it. And the I want my shaped aperture in um, actually in that this white piece as well as the um the pattern paper i can't get my words out today on um, the pattern paper and i've got this pattern paper that's five by seven and i'm actually going to cut it am i going to cut it down no i'm going to glue it on there and then i'm going to cut my aperture out so let's go ahead and glue that on and this is from the cheers to you collection the paper and this I mean this cheers to you pad is relatively strong but I just felt like this card really because of the kinetic nature of the card it really needs um, to have some good heavy weight card so that's why I'm putting the multiple layers with the white and everything so these two are five by seven and then the dark blue I cut just a little bit a quarter of an inch larger so you'll see if this white is five by seven and then the blue is going to go on the back of it just like that for the back part but we're going to do this one first and then the blue is going to go on here and then we're going to cut our aperture Okay, so just like that. And then once I get this done, I'll set it aside and um, and show you the sides and everything 
and other parts of it while this glue is drying before I send it through my Gemini. I don't want to send it through the Gemini to cut with the glue really wet. So this is my front that I'm going to cut my aperture through. And again, the pattern paper is five by seven. The blue paper is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and glue the five and a quarter by seven and a quarter to a five by seven white, just white it's in the back. This is your bottom, the bottom of your card, the back of your card. Oh, I'll Almost used up my glue. Okay, so I'll get this on there. And then my back panel is going to go right on top of that white, just right in the middle. And I know that it doesn't go all the way over, but I'm going to put a side panel on there anyway that's going to cover it up. But I made it six. My opening is going to be five, but I made it six just so that it would actually go underneath the sides, just so you get a good coverage. So let's just center this up right on top of the white. Okay. I'm going to set those to one side and I'm going to work on the sides. So now we need the side panels that these parts right here that fold. Okay. And these are, there's, you need two of them. They're four and three quarters by seven. And we're going to score each of them at one inch, at one inch, and at three and a half. So you're going to score it in half and then at one inch on, the, on one. Same on the other one. So two of those, four and three quarter by seven. Score along the long side at one inch and at three and a half. Before I get too far, I'm going to erase that. Doesn't show. Then you know. Burnish those. Like that. Okay. And you want them this way, both this way. Okay. Then we're going to take our back panel, and these are going to glue on with the one inch tabs right onto each side like that so that the white lines up with the white or is it doesn't line up because it's in a, a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch shorter so just right in the center like that okay so let's go ahead and glue those on I'll use my tacky glue this time so put your glue on the one inch tab and you're going to put that right up against the edge of the white right in the middle okay and then you can do the same thing on the other side and you want to be fairly quick because you got to make sure these line up perfectly So get it on there. 
and then once you get it on there push them down and they should close exactly perfectly and if they don't you want to kind of pull them so that they're straight and even and that's pretty good and then rub it down so now you've got essentially your, the base of your card okay oh and i forgot to cut my little slits before i put it in there but it's okay i can do it now so um i have this little punch that cuts two slits and you, you need two slits and it would have been easier if i had done this before i put it on there but on the bottom part in the the two and a half inch section in the middle you want to cut two slits and so i'm just going to use my punch if i can get it to punch there we go just about like that if you don't have a punch like this you can use a craft knife and a ruler or that which is actually what i did on the other card and then i found my punch but you just want um two punches uh sort of you know about three quarters of an inch or half an inch up from the bottom and they can be as whatever distance apart you want and i just kind of put them in the middle just because um i'd hardly glued the thing on and that's where the punch fits but um you could put them towards the back you could spread them out more in fact i might just no that's fine and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm do the same thing on this side. Okay. So you want the two punches in essentially the same place on each side. And you could do it with a craft knife or, like I said, I have that ribbon punch and that works perfectly. But a craft knife and a ruler works just as easily. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and decorate this front panel because that's this piece right here and I've got a piece of paper that's four and three quarters by seven and we're going to cut it in half and I just decorated it with some ink and some stamps and I'm going to cut it in half because I'm going to put half on each side but I wanted to decorate it first and ink it first because I want it to look like it's all one piece. I didn't want, see how it darkens around the edge when you ink it? I didn't want it darkened on the edge in the middle. So let's go ahead and glue those on. But you want them to come together because when the card closes, that's what you're going to see. To make these pieces in the middle that you can attach decoration to, you need some cardstock. And mine is six inches by uh, about three quarters of an inch and I layered these up three um, I layered three pieces of cardstock together to make it nice and sturdy um, because I found if the cardstock that you use is not sturdy enough when you go to close it instead of sliding it'll just bend so you want to make this nice and sturdy so that's why I triple layered the cardstock most and also because the white cardstock that I cut from was not um, super sturdy it's I mean it's not flimsy but I think it's like 80 pound cardstock which um, is really not thick enough and sturdy enough for this project you need some probably at least 300 GSM cardstock or um, the other thing that would look nice is to use uh, acetate with these and I would use not the heat resistant but the construction acetate that's really stiff and sturdy that I think would work really well but I just need two of those or if you cut more than two slits you could also use put more slits in and and do um, three decorative things or pop-up things or whatever you want to use
and again my blue cardstock is not it's 80 pound cardstock it's not super heavyweight and this one i just ran through the oceans uh, embossing folder and then i put a little bit of white um, ink on the top just to give it a little bit of color variation to make it look like water just gonna layer those up okay. now each of these is going to fit through on this side and on that side okay just like that and then we're going to attach our decoration to these um, however if you don't do anything they're just going to fall out right so once you get them in there i'm going to this one's going to be my beach, so I'm going to have to ink this one before I put it on there. Because I want it to look like sand. Or to be the same color as the sand. Okay, that's good. So, once I put them in there, I need, a, I need stoppers, essentially, to keep them from falling out. To make them slide, but not fall out. And to do that... I mean, let's use this. I need some cardstock, and what I did is I just cut some pieces, super thin slices, and you need four of them, one for each end, and you're just going to glue, let me get it down here so you can see, put some glue on here. And you're going to glue that onto the end of each of these pieces. And you can make them as however long you want. You just want to make sure that they're longer than the slit. They're, you know, that they're bigger than the slit so that they won't just pull through the slit as well. So we're going to put one on each end and then we'll go do the other side. Once you get them on there, you can trim them down. They don't have to be that big. Because you can see my slits are just barely bigger than my cardstock, so I don't need them terribly big. Just need a little bit. And that's going to keep them from sliding through. Okay, so put them through on the other side and do the same thing on this side. So we're going to take our two pieces of cardstock, put some tacky glue on there, one on that one, and one on the blue one. And you just want to cut your slits wide enough that your paper is going to slide through it easily. So see how it can move you don't want it to if you cut these slits to if you just like cut a slit but don't actually open it up a little bit then your paper's not going to slide it's just going to hang up and and so your mechanism isn't going to work let's just trim these off okay and now my little sliders are there so you can see they slide in and out just like that um, I want you to notice though when it's shut look at how much room there is on each of those because that's how much room you have to decorate is when it's shut just right in that middle if you decorate all the way to the edges with you know let's let's say I put a boat you know weight right here now my net mechanism is not going to work because that can't slide through so i can only put my boat in the middle where it's going to fit because i only have that much room when it's closed it'll make sense in a minute so there's that piece now we're going to do our front so i've got my blue cardstock layered up and i liked this is the inverted 
um, scalloped nesting die. I don't know what it's called. And I'm just going to line this up and see if I can get it on there straight. Thankfully, the background paper having lines kind of helps. But we're just going to line that up. Put it in the middle, get it straight. And hopefully this nesting die will actually cut through those three layers of cardstock. Yes. Okay. Ah. Took a bit to get through. Three layers of cardstock plus two layers of Kalal all-purpose glue. I guess that's, that is a lot of... I'm asking a lot of my die to do that. So... It's not a multimedia die, so. So there's my aperture, and that's going to go on the front just like that. Now I need to attach this in a way that allows these panels to slide open. So how do you do that? Well, get two pieces of paper two strips of paper. These are an inch wide by six inches long, so an inch by six, and we're going to score them at half an inch on each side. Then we're going to take this, this is going to go this way, I'll put it that way. So, um, actually, I didn't, I don't think I got that very even, this looks wider than that, so I'm going to put the wider part at the bottom. And we're going to put these, we're going to put ta glue on these tabs, and then we're going to glue them right inside that aperture, just right about like there. Okay, you kind of want to get it even there. All right, so let's put some glue on our tabs, one on each side. And the main thing is just to get them straight and even top to bottom or as close as you can. We're going to do one on each side. down. And then before we're going to slide these into each of those. And But before I do that, I want to put, see this one I put little ribbon ties on and I put little tabs on them. But this one I think I'm just going to try and punch right into there. Am I going to be able to do that? No, I think I'm going to have to put tabs on this one too. Um, if you made these pieces a little bit longer, I guess you could. But the way that I did it is I just took, I have a circle punch, but you can use pretty much anything. And I'm just going to punch a couple small circles. You can use a die if you have a die. I just have this, I think it's from Creative Memories and Little Hole Punch, and it obviously needs to be sharpened. And then 
the top of that circle, I'm going to put a little, I've got a hole punch and I'm just going to put a hole in it because I'm going to use this to attach a ribbon to. So just put your hole in. Then we're going to glue these into the middle on each side on the underside, just like that. Okay, the one on each side. Get my tacky glue back out here. And this is going to give one, it's going to give the card recipient something to grab onto to pull, but it's also going to help keep your piece from sliding through. So I'm going to line the, try and line this up. That doesn't have to be perfect. Let's be a little bit higher. There we go. Oh, I did pretty well. Okay, so I got those on there. Now you're going to take this piece and you're going to slide it this end through that white little pocket because you just put glue on the tabs so that left a little pocket that you can slide this piece through yep. except I got glue on the outside okay. so it just slides fits right in and slides through on that side and then you can slide it over far enough that you can get to this side I'm gonna do the same thing again so I take that piece and we're just going to slide it in and through and that's your card and then um, I put some little ribbon so I've got some ribbon and then I'm going to decorate but I'm going to put the ribbon on and the ribbon kind of keeps it from keeps things from uh, keeps these things from falling back through You can make this card any size you want. Um, I made mine to basically be five by seven, but you can make it anything. And there you go. Now all we have to do is decorate. So first I got to do my inside. Now remember I told you, whatever you put on the inside has to fit on those things when this is closed. So you can see how much room there is and you wanna put it right in the middle. So when you open it up to decorate, make sure you put things in the middle. 